Hello and welcome back my friends. I'm Dan and you're watching Plant Abundance on YouTube. So check this out. Right here we've got this beautiful peach tree just loaded down with fruit. It's looking quite healthy. This is the Florida King peach. Been really happy with this tree. And next door to the peach tree, we have a white nectarine. Now this nectarine tree has developed a bit of a disease issue here. And you may be seeing this on your trees as well. This is called peach leaf curl or Tephrina deformans. Now typically you're gonna see these develop on a peach tree, white nectarine, but it can affect other stone fruits like the apricot as well. And even the almond tree, although I've never seen issues on my apricot or my almond tree back here. So I've been getting a lot of questions coming through the channel and I have addressed this in a previous video telling you all the things you can do to negate this problem. But in some cases, people got a rather large tree that's severely infected and they're worried they may even have to cut down the tree that it's just too far gone. I've got good news for you. You don't have to do that. 99% of cases, your tree's gonna survive and be just fine. But there's a few things that you can do proactively to stop this from occurring in the future and to help to heal your tree right now. So let's say you've got a larger tree, you've already got some fruit set developing, but the leaves are just covered with this disease and even some of the limbs now are starting to show effects and the fruit is not looking as healthy. Maybe the tree is dropping more fruit. Should you be really concerned and think about removing that tree yet? Absolutely not. What you want to do right now, if you've got a smaller dwarf tree, you can actually go around and remove some of those leaves by hand. And I've done that in the past, but over the years as my tree has gotten larger and with the questions coming in regarding larger trees, I want to give you even more information on ways that you can deal with this so that you're not overly concerning yourself with it. So first let's talk about how this disease develops. Well, it has to do with moisture. So the first flush of leaves that you have coming out of your trees after winter dormancy are going to be the leaves that develop this issue. What's going to happen over time eventually is the tree is going to drop those leaves and you're going to have a new flush of leaves come out and those trees should be disease free. So you don't have to worry about the tree dying from this in most cases. Now what you can do is you can remove some of the fruits that are developing just so that the tree can put more energy into healing if you're dealing with a severe issue this year. Now my tree's still got a pretty good balance going here. There are some diseased leaves, but the majority of them are healthy. And I actually did treat this tree in its dormant season with a dormant spray. Now what I'll be doing with this tree this year is just letting it be. We've got a pretty good balance of healthy leaves to the fungal leaves that have developed on this tree. And that can even happen if you're doing some of these protocols, such as a dormant fruit tree spray, which you're gonna to wanna to treat this tree in the fall after it loses all of its leaves. And then again, late winter before spring, before the tree erupts with new growth. So copper fungicide is my favorite way to treat dormant fruit trees so that you can get rid of this problem altogether. And that's an organic treatment that you can add to your trees. Something else I want to add here is that a lot of people get concerned or have a belief that if your tree is imbalanced and it's developing these problems, that it must be a problem that man has created through hybridization, through these other issues, because nature's perfect. And what I want to remind you guys is that we are part of nature. And as part of nature, we can come out here and we can come up with systems and to help heal the tree as a complete system so don't separate yourself from nature remember we're all interconnected here and so coming out and doing some of these treatments and helping your tree to regain health is nature so don't be afraid of that so copper fungicide copper is a natural element found in the earth can be used to defeat this disease from taking over your tree so for this year if you've already got a bad case of this especially if your tree is larger you're not going to want to go around and spend a whole bunch of time picking off all the leaves and dealing with it too much right now. It's probably too far gone. Just allow the tree to go through its cycle. The main thing you could do right now, you can remove some of the worst leaves that you see. You know, spend 10 minutes removing some of those leaves by hand and getting them off site. Don't throw them in your compost pile. And then you can thin the tree of some of the fruits so that the tree can, again, use its energy to really heal itself. Now, allow the tree to go through its cycle. So what you're gonna to wanna to do to defeat this problem from coming back the following year is once the tree loses those diseased leaves and you've got all that diseased mulch now around the bottom of the tree, do a really good cleanup, clean all these leaves up. And because a lot of those leaves are gonna dry up 
and crunch down and become part of the soil profile, you're going to want to actually scrape back a lot of that mulch, use a rake and get a bucket and get all of that out because these spores can proliferate and come back year after year. So you really want to get all the base area of your tree cleaned up. And then in the fall, when the tree has lost all of its leaves, you can do your dormant copper fungicide spray. It's not going to do you any good to spray your tree now when it's already fruiting and you start seeing these leaves on the tree. Avoid doing that by all means because you also have beneficial insects that are out at this time throughout your garden, bees and ladybugs and other insects that you do not want to harm. So the good news is, is this only takes literally a few minutes a year and you really will see amazing results. Like you can see here, I've had this disease issue on this peach tree in the past. And if you look closely, you might see a leaf here or there that doesn't look fully healthy. There's one, one leaf. So it's not 100% disease free, but at the same time, it's looking very healthy and has a large fruit set. So you can definitely get the upper hand. And that's what this is all about. Just getting the upper hand, not spending too much time dealing with any one thing. But all in all, your investment of time dealing with these issues is going to be worth it tenfold. The amount of fruit that you can get off some of these trees is literally worth hundreds of dollars if you were to try to purchase it at the store. And typically, you're never going to find the same quality buying from the store. You can get tree ripened fruit right in your own yard with a very minimal investment up front, a minimal investment of time and some of these different protocols that I explained to you in this video. All right, so a quick recap for you. You've got a peach or a nectarine tree. It's got the peach leaf curl on it. It's looking like the tree is completely a goner. It's all diseased. What do you do? You let the tree go through its cycle. It's going to drop those diseased leaves. It's going to flush out new growth, which shouldn't have the disease there because now we've entered into these warmer months. You don't have those cold, damp winter conditions that cause those fungal diseases to pop up. Then you're going to clean around the base of the tree uh, throughout the season. And then again, at the end of the year, scrape back the mulch get it all cleaned up, put some fresh mulch down. And then you're going to spray the tree in the fall. Once the tree has completely lost its leaves, you're going to give it that dormant fruit tree spray. And then again, in the winter, before the tree opens up, a couple weeks before the tree opens up and you're not having rains every day or every week, give it another spray of the copper fungicide. And that's going to stop those fungal spores from spreading throughout the tree. You should have a completely healthy tree the following year. If not, you might have a couple leaves pop up but you will have gotten the upper hand and you repeat that year after year. It's a very small investment of time. You're gonna have yourself some very healthy, wonderful peaches, nectarines, and other stone fruits. So that's gonna do it, my friends. Just a quick reminder for you, grow more food. It's one of the best investments you can make in your life. It's gonna save you money. It's gonna to contribute to your health. It's gonna give you really an asset that can be bartered with, traded with, with neighbors. And overall, you're doing something good for yourself, your family, for nature very rewarding. I want you guys to experience the abundance that we're getting back here. It's so easy. Anybody can do it. So I'm a big fan of growing perennial crops, whether it's fruit trees, berry shrubs, perennial greens. There's so many things that you can grow where you plant it once and you reap the rewards for year after year after year. All right, everybody. I hope this video was helpful or entertaining in some way. If so, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day, and we're always updating you on all the different projects growing on around here. So with that, thank you all for tuning in. Have yourself a good one. Talk to you later.